Hi again, folks. Today we're going to talk a little bit about this 1947 Alice Chalmers Model B. If you've seen some of my other videos, this is a sweetheart of a tractor. This is my grandfather's. He bought it brand new. And today we're going to talk a little bit about the charging system. It's always been a little mystery to me how the electrical system worked on these tractors, and I know it's really simple. But there's not all that many of them left, and certainly not in a six volt with the original equipment. So I thought I'd go through what I've learned, and maybe some folks have some comments that would set me straight if I've got some stuff wrong. But uh, move around to this side. We've got the charging system here, and we're going to tear into this a little bit so you can see what it looks like. Um, six volt generator. DC generator, and I thought this was a regulator, but it isn't. And uh, for folks that have a Model A or, you know, a six-volt tractor like this, uh, you might be familiar with it, but I wasn't. And so uh, one of the things that I always wondered about this tractor is when it was running, even... Uh, you know, this, this thing wouldn't, uh, the, the AM gauge wouldn't center towards zero. When it's running, it was around 12 to 15 amps all the time, unless you ran the lights, in which case it was maybe around 5 to 8 amps. And when I put a meter on the battery, I was seeing about 8.5, 9 volts on a 6-volt system. And I thought, you know, for just starting it and running it for short periods of time, I probably need that kind of uh, Voltage to charge the battery back up because um, sometimes it doesn't run very long. But, you know, if I'm going to use it for an hour or two, I don't want to cook the battery. And uh, so I just wanted to try to figure out if there was a way to adjust this. I figured since it didn't change that this regulator was bad. So let's take a look at this thing and see what it looks like. So pulling the cover on this what I thought was a regulator. I noticed there's a single coil. It appears to see be a single coil. And one wire that's going to the coil here. And another wire that looks like it's going to the ground. These tractors are positive ground. So that left me a little befuddled. Um, most mechanical regulators that I've seen have two coils. So I was kind of confused. I didn't know if there was another coil inside this one. And when the voltages got the same, um, somehow the one coil would maybe contradict the other one. And, uh, and this would not activate this this relay um, but it turns out after doing a little research I was just flat misunderstood what was going on here this is really a voltage cutout relay and if the tractor is running that circuit is closed and when the tractor stops running it opens up and we'll demonstrate that open back up. Uh, the purpose for that is that if that switch stays closed, the battery then feeds the generator instead of the other way around. And if this belt weren't here, this generator becomes an electric motor and it won't turn. There's not much power there going the other way. And so it'll just cook the wires, drain the battery, would be probably the best situation, but otherwise cook the wires, uh, cook the wires maybe in the coil, um, start to 
heat up and wreck the wires in the in the generator itself. Okay, well, that's handy. Um, I guess I know now why it's just either charging or not charging. Um, but doing a little more research, I discovered that you can kind of fine tune these old generators. And it's, uh, it's a compromise because if, if you're gonna run this little tractor and uh, just use it for short periods of time because it's just charging at a certain rate, you want it to charge at a pretty good rate. Um, if you're using it at night and you're gonna run the lights, you want it charging at a pretty good rate. But if you're gonna use it during the day at medium throttle settings for a couple hours without the lights on, you probably don't want it at a, at a high rate because you clip the battery. And again, there's no voltage regulator on here. It's just an on and off switch. So let's see, uh, so, so it's a compromise. You can set this generator uh, for various outputs, but you really kind of need to know what, how you want to use this thing and uh, to what extent do you want it charging. So let's take a look at uh, what we're going to do here. We're going we're gonna to pull this cover off. There's just a screw here and this is just a piece of metal that wraps around. We're going to take that off and uh, take a look and see what it looks like inside there. All right, so I've got the cover pulled off, and there's this there's this paper um, that's on here. I'm going to be kind of careful with this, hopefully not tear it. And here, inside here, we'll throw a little extra light on it. Um, we've got some brushes. And it looks like a float that's not shutting off, so I'm gonna shut the fuel off so I quit tripping out of the carburetor. Um, what's interesting is that these brushes aren't opposite each other at first glance. It's like, well, that's strange. Most electric motors I've seen have brushes on the opposite side of the motor. Um, and then I look over on this side, if I get the camera over there, and there is another set of brushes over there. Okay, so we've got three sets of brushes on this thing. And turns out this one back here and this one are 180 degrees from each other. Kind of the standard way you'd see an electric motor. Uh, but this guy, this guy's kind of offset at an odd angle. And as it turns out, that set of brushes, um, and someone that knows generators and electronics a little more than I could probably explain it a lot better than I, but that brush determines the, uh, the field. And if it is closer to 180 degrees from the other one, that field increases, and the closer it is to 90 degrees or perpendicular to these two brushes, the weaker the output is. So we'll take a look at that once. Shut this light off again. I guess there's enough light in here. I can adjust by loosening this screw. Okay, I loosen that up. I can reach in here and I can move, move this brush into various locations here. And these brushes are, are really something. Um, pretty heavy duty. If you've replaced brushes on a vacuum cleaner or a Dremel tool or something, it's not much there. Um, as far as I know, these are original. They're on springs here to hold them in place, but there's a lot of material there. So let's, let's start this tractor up and we'll see what the, what the ammeter output is, what the brush is like it is right now. All right, so we see here we're probably 18 amps. Um, that's what the light's off. I don't turn the lights on. I'm still pushing nine amps or so. 
get the multimeter out and take a look at that. All right, got a bright light here. Sorry about that. This is a positive ground. I'm about 8.5 volts in an idle. Off idle, about 8.7. slide this brush up and I will snug this screw just to hold it in place so it can't. Another thing you've got to do with these is every so often you got to put a little bit of just a little bit of oil in here just a couple drops lubricate the bearings. All right Let's start it up again. With the lights on, what are we at? We're at 7.2. With the lights off, well, we're still at 8.5 volts. So there's still still plenty of voltage there, but uh, about 10 amps less output. like that that's set right now as far as I can adjust it and uh, we'll button her back up all right I'm going to show you another neat little feature of this Alice Chalmers Model B and that is the screen for the radiator um, and I'm not talking about the screen that protects everything I'm talking about the louvers um, behind it now, I never did see my grandfather adjust this. I, I, from my recollection, these were always run wide open. Um, and as I use the tractor a bit, I noticed that the thing always runs cold. And there's no thermostat on these, um, hence the louvers. And it took me um, a bit of time to um, loosen them up, get them. They were, they were kind of rusted in place. But if I tighten this, you start to see um, this starting to open up. And now you can see straight, straight through to the, uh, to the radiator. That's wide open. And then of course I can go the other way and you can soon close. Um, it's December here in Wisconsin and I had it out the other day. It was probably 32, 35 degrees, something like that. And um, if these are open, the temperature gauge, which is on these little Alice tractors, the temperature gauge is right here. It, it would barely get above 120 ever. Um, and in the wintertime, it would barely move at all. Um, it'll It'll kind of be hanging down. Um, it'll run kind of through the S and Alice, but, uh, and this thing's kind of rusted inside and it's hard to see, but you can see a little bit, maybe 
120, 170, 200. And that 180 degree range is normal um, work range. And it, it would never get to that temperature. Um, but once I figured out how these louvers work, um, start it up, let it run, especially in this cool weather. Uh, you could run it all day with the louvers closed and it, it won't get r really up above 170. Um, and of course, if you're working it and generating some heat, um, then of course you'd have to open them up to keep it from overheating. But uh, yeah, fine little tractor and it's a lot of fun to learn and play with. And of course I have a lot of fond memories I learned how to drive a tractor on this tractor. First trailer I ever backed was on this tractor and fond memories of my grandfather riding alongside him when I was a little kid on this tractor. I was kinda kind of interested in how this all worked and uh, learned something over the last couple days and thought I'd share it. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If, if you wanna see some more video of this little tractor, um, Doing its thing. I've got uh, some videos on my channel. You can watch it doing some plowing, um, some snow plowing, some plowing of the fields. Um, this is a neat little tractor, and my grandpa had it set up pretty nice for working on his little little farm. So, uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.